All right, today we're gonna to talk about uh, time for numbers. Um, this just doesn't pertain uh, exclusively to streamers. I do this with uh, nymphs and dries too. Um, I really hesitate to say production tying on this because I'm not a production tire. Um, you look at some of the the world class guys out there, you know, the Mike Schmitz, uh, Andreas Anderson, Rich Strollis, these guys that are just cranking out an insane amount of numbers um, as far as their flies go. Damn, uh, Probot up in Jersey as well, um, just putting out a crazy amount of flies. Um, I'm not on that level. I, I doubt I ever will be. I, I don't think I'm ever going to be. I, I sell my flies on a limited basis. Um, here and there, not not too often while I sell my flies, but uh, you know, I mean, I retire in eight years, so I mean, it, it's it's a possibility. It, it it's very much a possibility to where I may get into doing that. Um, but bottom line is, I mean, I really enjoy time, and um, you know, you want after a certain amount of time after it transitions past being just a hobby you know it starts getting into almost an obsession or uh, take a look around it gets into being an obsession or whatever but long story short if you get past um, the just recreational tire you're gonna wind up filling up fly box after fly box um, just to have a better selection when you're out on the water so with that, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to tie one fly at a time. Go one fly, stop with that one, go on to the next. Usually when folks do this, I mean, you talk to a lot of guys in the shops that tie their own flies. Uh, when you talk to them, they'll say they'll crank out at least a dozen of one pattern before they'll move on to the next. And to do, I mean, it just speeds up. You can get into a rhythm and you can you can really knock chop that damn toy speaking of getting into a rhythm speck or chewing on the damn toy and it's just making all sorts of noise distracting me but anyhow moving on that may get edited out we'll see um, but these guys that own the shops and everything they're continually cranking out you know dozens at a time of the same pattern and it's more so just so they can hit their numbers. Uh, you can tie a dozen of one pattern a lot quicker than you can a dozen separate ones, mainly because all your materials are all laid out and everything. Uh, for this one, I mean, I have laid out, um, we have a dozen Miss Octobers that we're gonna tie. And I have all my hooks out. These are all the, the back hooks. We'll zoom in a little bit so we can see the materials I'm talking about just a little bit better but here's all the back hooks uh, Daiichi 2461 twos and then I have my front hooks laid out 2461 ones and with this I have my lead eyes tied on already and the articulation wire so there you have that next up on that I mean Next on this fly, we go with the ice wing fiber. In the black, that's going to be the tail. And then we have marabou for, you know, uh, palmer wraps of marabou. I have all of my marabou sorted out right here. If I'll zoom out a little bit, you can see we're obviously going to be doing these ones in black and white. But here it is. All my marabou sorted out. Uh, all, of the, all of the junk is picked off already. So if you look, I mean, you can see all the aftershaft and everything is all cleared away. It's basically ready for me to pick up, throw it on, tie it on there, and continue moving on with the next. There we have the, the body material, UV puller, and then I even go down as far as sorting out, you know, once I get to the front hook, sorting out all the rubber legs. And you do this all beforehand because it seems like I said earlier, you can get into a rhythm once you start tying, you know, you get to your back hooks and I'll tie all six back hooks at a time and then I'll do six on the white. So we'll start with the black or the white, whichever one we start with. We'll tie all six of those, we'll transition over to the other color, 
tie all 12 back hooks before we jump up to the front hook, before we go connect them and everything. But along with that, you know, I mean, here's the glass beads that I use on the, the front. I have a dozen of those out and then the beads for the connection wire before, for the articulation portion. All 12 of those are sorted out and everything's sitting in front of me. I mean, I don't have to search for anything. I don't have to reach for, for anything. Everything is right in front. Um, the only thing that I don't really pre-sort on this uh, are these, are my hackles. It seems like, you know, I don't know, it doesn't really take a whole lot of extra time to go in here and look and be like, okay, yeah, those two, pick them up, line them up, throw them on there and everything, and you're good. Now, if I'm doing deceiver tails, um, I have a measuring point so where I can just take those out and I can sort a dozen or so of those and have them on the table and not have to worry about anything and they're good but with these ones I mean without having the back half of your fly tied I mean I guess you could just go in here throw throw your two in there and then you're gonna want it you know it's gonna be relatively about here but I go off the distance of how far back my marabou goes so it's gonna vary from fly to fly uh, slightly you know so I don't really cut those short or I don't, I don't really cut and pre-sort those. Those are the only things. But like I said, it doesn't take but a second to come in here, find two you like, pick them out, throw them on there, and you're on your way. Everything's good. But should have said this at the very beginning. Before you start any of this, clear your bench. Clear your work area to where you have nothing but a clean slate in front of you. And then start laying out your materials. Grab your hooks. Figure out how many of those you want to how many of each pattern you want to tie. Throw them out there and start working. Um, get all of your materials like we have laid out here on the bench. And it's just going to be one thing after another. And like I said, you get into a rhythm so quick. As soon as you start tying these, it's just one thing after another. And you just really crank through these in no time. Uh, one thing that I will say, though, is before you go tying for numbers, make sure you have a pattern pretty close to mastered you don't want to be tying a dozen flies and have a dozen different looking flies make sure you have this pattern down make sure it's something that you're really comfortable with before you start tying for big numbers like that but once you have once you're comfortable with it by all means have at it but just open these boxes up here real quick the majority of these i would say probably 90 percent uh, of these have been done uh, it's March now here but uh, started probably tying these in late October really started getting serious in November so I mean probably 90% of these have been done in the last four months but we'll just open these up here and just give you an idea of what we're looking at this is the yellow box um, Feathercraft meat locker it's a phenomenal box um, if you guys are looking for tying a bunch of flies, a bunch of streamers, that's the way to go. I mean, I have 13 of those things just packed full. And then I have two of these MFC boxes. Open these up, make sure it's facing the right way. But there it is. I mean, you can kind of get an idea of how many flies we're talking. And it's just over the course of four months, you know. I mean, I'll come home every day from work get those out of the way I'll come home every day from work and sit down and tie you know especially in the winter months but I mean it's pretty much every day throughout the year I'll do at least some part of a fly whether it's prepping the eyes on the front hooks or it's um, you know I have a couple sitting over here uh, getting ready to go I did these the other night I tied in the articulation wire and uh, bent the hooks for I think what well, I have a dozen white girls up there I'm gonna tie so, I mean, just taking the time and doing that, say you only have an hour to tie after work or whatever it may be, prep stuff, get it ready, and then to where when you do have the time to dedicate to actually putting flies together, this is more so in the streamer world. The nymphs and the dries, you can tie a dozen of those after work almost every day if you want. Before long, you have every box known to manful because you can just go through those so much faster than canned streamers especially the articulated stuff 
but get everything once you have a dedicated knight to where you're able to tie and actually spend some time um, have everything prepped like this you know maybe tonight maybe I only get through six of these and I have this side of the table clear and then I'll start tomorrow whenever I get back to the bench I'll start on the white but the thing is just continually keep after it and before long I mean you'll see I mean you can have uh, you know in in a couple of months you you can have flies for now until well, now until whenever but you know I mean I just tie a lot of these I don't really, I, like I said earlier I don't sell many um, every once in a while I'll sell them and, um, the majority of them are for you know folks that I fish with you know my uncle dad or my uncle my dad um, whenever they come out I like to fish for them or I like to tie for them make sure that they're set up and everything but uh, this past year we kind of ramped things up a little bit because um, this fall we were out and the white bogey was just lighting it up and I didn't have enough of them tied I think I had a dozen and we we went through a lot of them uh, we were fishing for two weeks solid you know whether it be a, you know just the articulation wire filing or you know lead eyes crack whatever it may be we, we wound up going through close to a dozen of them and had to go run down to the shop down to Kelly's and I had had to buy flies actually from the shop you know which I, don't get me wrong I love supporting fly shops I mean every time I'm in one almost I, it's very rare for me to leave a fly shop without buying something but as a fly tire it's kind of a kick in the teeth because you're like man I wasn't able to support you know two weeks of fishing with with streamers so I think I think we're set Uncle Bob I think we'll be good for this year but we're gonna just go through this a little bit and I'm actually gonna put some of these together and then I'll show you the next step in my process and I won't ramble on near as much on the next one. No promises though. But I'm gonna put a couple of these together and then I'll show you the next part of the process. I'll explain a little bit further on that and then once we get everything connected, I'll finish time, bring the cameras and everything back out and then show you the final product and usually, I mean, something like this, it's probably going to take me, I, I don't know, I would say maybe maybe an hour. If, I, if there's no interruptions or anything and I can just sit here and go away at these flies, uh, probably about an hour. But luckily, you guys don't have to listen to me for an hour because I don't think, one, as much as I like talking about flies and lock, like talking about fishing, I don't think I can do it for an hour. That's, that's I don't know. I'm not going to put it to the test, so we'll catch you here in a little bit. Alright, so now we have all of our uh, Knoxville cameo. I'm trying to talk. What do you want? What? Go lay down. Uh. Non-stop entertainment here. So anyhow, now we have all of our back hooks or our back halves done. We got the half dozen black, half dozen white, and you can see I connect all of my um, connect all of my front hooks with the articulation wire and the bead at this point. So what I do is, like I explained earlier, I tie the six white, set them off to the side, tie the six black, set those off to the side. Then I just start grabbing the front hooks. And, you know, at that point, it's a good time, you know, go get up, stretch your legs, grab a cold one, whatever it may be. Uh, but, you know, then, it, you know, I come back, throw all of my uh, wire, or all, all of my front hooks, I connect everything. So you can see we're all, we're all connected on all of these materials. And another thing I'll say on this is as you as you get rid of or as you finish up with materials that you're using on the back hack exclusively, throw them back up on the racks, get them out of your way. The less stuff you can have on the table, um, the less to potentially have you causing to or potentially causing you 
to search a little bit longer than what you would have to with less material on the table, the better. Wow, it took me a lot to get a simple thought out there. <laughs> Anyhow, put your new stuff up back on the racks that way it's not confusing you. Um, Anyhow, like I said, we got our front and backs connected now. And what I'm going to do from here forward is I'm just going to start picking. We're going to go with the white, finish those six. I'm going to pick those. All of this material is going to be out of the way. We're going to go with the black. We'll be done once the black's finished. But we'll pick it back up afterwards just to kind of wrap everything up and hopefully... I'll be able to remember what I said in the first two portions of this by the time I get to filming the third and everything can make sense. The odds of that aren't great, but I don't know, crazier stuff's happened. We'll see. So as you can see, we got all 12 um, finished up here, lined up on the bench. Um, so over, a, you know, wasn't even a two day period really, it was the night prior. Uh, went through, put all the hooks, or all the uh, eyes connection wire on, and then, uh, you know, prepped, sorted the material, did the back halves, and then first thing today, uh, went through, finished everything up, uh, got everything tied, everything is complete. So, uh, not a whole lot to say on this, just kind of, just kind of want to wrap this up, kind of tie everything together from the uh, other two segments that we did on this but um, one thing that I will go into and I don't think I have no I don't have any of them sitting here on the bench but uh, like if you're putting any of the like doll eyes or anything on I do that all at once. So, like, if I'm tying a bunch of D&Ds or, you know, rainbow riffles, whatever it may be, whichever pattern that you put the lead eyes on, I'll do, that, that'll be its separate step, too. So, I'll tie and trim all of the D&Ds up, set them off to the side, and then I'll pop it back in a vise and throw all the eyes in. It just seems, it, once again, I mean, you can kind of get into a rhythm once you start doing that, and it's, it breaks it up a lot less when you're when you finish a fly up you stop go over get your glue put your eyes on it just seems to be a smoother and cuts down a little bit of time but um the last thing i'll say on this and i just want to retouch on the the importance of prepping your materials i mean that's really where you make or break your money when you're that's really what's going to make or break you when you're doing the uh, when you're tying for numbers if you can have everything just laid out uh take the extra time just go ahead and lay everything out, have everything sorted and selected. And you can see, I mean, this is probably, um, from start to finish, I would say probably two and a half hours, two, two and a half hours of time. And that's counting sorting materials, you know. Once you get everything laid out, you can just start really clicking through it, get into a rhythm, and increase your, the numbers that you're tying. You're not going to really cut down the time on individual flies because I mean you, you just can't make that faster but what you can do having everything sorted and prepped when you're tying the numbers that's when you're gonna cut your time down um, because you're not continually going back and forth through your material racks trying to find materials everything's already here so as you time in bulk that's where you save your time and that's where you can really start getting into you know, filling boxes up in a hurry. But hopefully I touched on everything that I wanted to. I had some notes on the side, so I'm, I'm hoping that I hit everything and it was somewhat coherent for everyone to, to, to watch and follow along. But as always, if you have any questions, uh, comments, or if there's something that you do that, that I don't, um, leave them in the comments. I'm always up to learn. I'm always looking for, you know, different ideas, different, uh, different suggestions so leave them in the comments and uh, you know go back and forth a little bit but uh, thanks again for watching and we'll catch you on the next fly